joined this week by Catherine Stewart from Edible Evidence. Catherine, you are a former guest on the podcast. It's very nice to have you back. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be back. And the last time you were on, obviously, you gave a very kind of general rundown of nutrition, the importance of it, things like that. Um, But you did mention how you know, talking about, let's say, periods was one of the areas that you, I'm not sure if you specialize in, but Mm -hmm. you were definitely passionate about. And that is obviously why I have invited you back on the Women in Sport podcast to talk more about the female nutrition and what is important Mm -hmm. for female athletes. So why I'm interested in periods. So I lost my period whenever I was younger through maybe a combination of not eating well enough for the exercise I was doing. And I was by no means an athlete. So I thought that like, that type of thing like reds and stuff didn't apply to me and probably I hadn't even heard of it before so then whenever I got mine back and during whenever I was trying to get it back as well then I'd say that probably sparked my interest in the menstrual cycle and learning a little bit more about it and how all the things that it can impact as well and maybe just through the stuff that I put on Instagram is maybe why I get a lot of clients who maybe would come because of that so I don't know if I'd call myself a specialist in the area, but I'm definitely very interested in the area. It's one of my favorite nutrition related areas. And I think that's often a common misconception that, you know, loss of period is purely overtraining. That if you're putting your body under the severe stress, mm-hmm. that that's going to lead. And as you mentioned there with the reds, if you are overtraining putting your body under intense stress several times a week mm-hmm. but as you said you wouldn't have considered yourself to be an athlete at the time and yet you yeah. still experience this loss of period yeah and I suppose it can happen for loads of reasons like the more people I see who have lost their period the more obvious it becomes that it can be sometimes purely stress driven sometimes purely just under eating or under feeling and then sometimes over exercise but mostly it's a bit of a combination of everything so it's kind of working on food and lifestyle and for someone who is really active and really sporty working on the exercise part of things can be really difficult and reducing that and trying to understand that reducing exercise might actually improve their health because really for so losing your period is called hypothalamic amenorrhea or sometimes people call it HA. So just to see if me saying that big long word, I'll just call it HA. <laughs> but um, in HA, all the advice kind of goes against like the general healthy and healthy nutrition advice. So then whenever you hear like eat more carbs, make sure you've got lots of fats in your diet, like stop exercising or doing hard exercise. That's you have to unlearn everything that you've been hearing and that you drummed into yourself where people maybe. I don't know, guidelines and things and things you learn as you go through school that you're kind of unlearning that. And even like if you're known as someone who's like, oh, she's a runner or she like loves going to hit classes or like she's eat really healthy and you're known as that, then sometimes people feel like they they can lose their identity a little bit as well going through the treatment for it. But there is no better feeling than whenever you see someone and they say they've got their period back or they've got it for the first time and it had been late and things like that. And there's so much more to gain whenever you do have a healthy menstrual cycle and can work in that, even in terms of performance, because you're never going to reach your peak performance if you don't have a regular menstrual cycle because of HA. So that's something that I suppose I sound like a broken record and always go over because even if someone's training to high level and they think that, you know, they're getting PBs and things like that, they could perform 10 times better if they had a regular menstrual cycle and if they don't sort it now, it's going to manifest later on in life as well. Or maybe whenever actually they come to think, oh, I'd like to have kids or try for try for babies and things like that. So I suppose it's recognize that there's an issue and then trying to think about how we go about sorting it. You know, um, and like we we'll, I suppose, go into a, a bit more detail with a lot of what you said there. Um, but just very interested in that whole about losing your identity, especially if you're a young girl who mm. is maybe very big into sport, very active. Mm. And, you know, you're passionate about that. Yeah. As you said, if you have to stop that or take a step back, it really can feel like you're losing that part of you. And yeah. it's not necessarily the case, you know, um, obviously everyone can return to uh-huh. And not everyone needs to give it up. Like, I I would never say you need to stop this. I'd say in an ideal world, maybe it would help things to accelerate things. But sometimes stopping 
you know, the sport that someone does completely is actually more harmful than helpful in some ways, because then it's kind of a bit of a rebound effect. So it's just working with the client, I suppose, and trying to agree that we need to reduce this in some way. So how could we do it? Or even just um, like exercise in the morning time is way more stressful than exercise after having eaten a couple of meals. So could we even look at the timing? And it's not to say that you can't train as much as you trained train now if you have to reduce it in the future but it's just that or you know a period of time things might need to be tweaked a little so just going back then to what reds is and um, just for anyone who's maybe thinking okay they've mentioned reds a few times uh-huh. what is that that yeah. is relative energy deficiency in sport and now yeah. a lot of people might have heard this previously like i know when i was training more competitively i would have heard it referred to as the female athlete triad yeah and I think that's what a lot of people refer to it as and basically it's you know it is all linked into low calorie deficit yeah and the stresses in the body so I think they changed the name from female athlete triad to reds because reds can happen to meals as well but obviously meals don't have a period so that is just one component of under feeling for sport and I suppose females are lucky in a way because you're cycle tailing off or kind of going AWOL is a very big sign that something's up males don't maybe get that and maybe it manifests as an injury whereas usually for females they might lose their cycle and then the injury might happen so it's a bit of a heads up that females get um but yeah it can happen to males as well um, and especially maybe more so in endurance type um activities and running um cycling things like that And that's really interesting. People always think that certain things are female specific. Like, as you Mm -hmm. said, when it was called the female athlete triad, it was like, no, this just affects women. But if you're calorie deficient, it doesn't matter whether you're male, female, what your energy level is or like what your activity level is. If Mm -hmm. you are calorie deficient, that is going to affect you. And I suppose women really have an advantage in this sense that we do have that indicator that you know, if mm-hmm. our period stops, okay, something is up, we need to identify what is up. Yeah. yeah, and it can be a variety of reasons. So I'm not just saying the only reason that you lose your period is because of HA, like there are loads of other reasons and it's always your first sport call is going to your GP so they can do blood tests and they can rule out any other causes. Maybe you're very to an endocrinologist or a gynecologist and things to do other investigations. And once they come to the conclusion, if it is HA, then you know, okay, this is what we're, treating because if it's due to something like PCOS maybe the things that we would do or recommend might be a little bit opposing to what we'd recommend for HA as well so it's important to get a proper diagnosis or kind of be clear I mean for some people it is very obvious but we'd still be like go see your GP get your bloods checked just so we can definitely definitely be on the safe side because if you aren't sure and you do you know recommend things that would help PCOS with in someone with HA then that could make things a little bit worse But then, as you said, there are so many different reasons why your period might stop. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, some obvious ones are, you know, if you get pregnant, if Mm -hmm. you're on some contraception, things like that. But Uh then, you know, stress can be a massive indicator as well. And stress can, you know, Mm -hmm. have, you know, late periods, early periods, Uh complete loss period, depending on the extent of the stress. Yeah, and lots of things can affect it. Like, I think there was a recent study, maybe by Trinity, I'm not sure, in in like... I think it was a really high percentage, maybe 50%. I'm literally just thinking of one headline that I read. So this is definitely not accurate, but <laughs> definitely there were studies done and the even like the vaccine for COVID has impacted cycles, you know, in some ways as well. So lots of different things can impact it. And with HA, it's exercise, um, food and stress. So like it could just be that someone is really stressed and they have HA and their food is absolutely fine. And the thing they need to work in on is the stress as well. And for quite a lot of people that I see, the stress of fitting in exercise is a whole other thing. So like exercise is stress in the body, but then someone's thinking, okay, well, I need to do that class at some stage today. So maybe I'll get up first thing in the morning time. I'll get up really early. So you get less sleep. You're already stressed. You get up, you don't have time for breakfast. Again, that's feeding into it again. Maybe you think, oh, I'll delay breakfast so that I don't need loads of snacks before lunch or in between. And then it can all feed in that way. Or quite often, like I'd say to people, oh, do you think you're stressed? And that's a bit of an open question. But then if I framed it like, OK, if you asked your friend or your aunt or, you know, someone, you know, if they were doing your schedule, 
how would they find it or would they find it stressful then they might say oh my gosh I don't know how you fit that in or no I'd need like a little break in there so it's good to see it from an outsider perspective as well yeah true because if it's your normal day-to-day thing you might be just getting on with it but then put someone else in your shoes and you might be like okay well maybe I didn't need to do that and it's about being a bit flexible with your training as well if fitting in that class is going to cause more harm than good so if like the negatives in terms of stress and time management are going to outweigh the actual health benefits of doing the class well then it's okay to miss the class I just think this is so interesting because I've said this on previous podcasts, you know, the lack of knowledge that was out 10, 15 years ago about all this stuff. Um, you know, when we read about it now, it kind of makes you think, God, why weren't we talking about this? Or why yeah. was this not brought to light years ago? Yeah, because it used to be maybe if you're a runner and say you went to your GP and you're like, well, I've lost my period. Then they were like, oh, OK, well, oh, right, you're a runner. Oh, well, that's normal. And that's definitely not the case and shouldn't be the case and I definitely think things are better like by my own admission I didn't know even what HJ was probably like four years ago and I had it five years ago so like at that stage I was just like oh this is a little bit convenient for, for the first six months I'm not gonna lie I was loving it I was like no monthly um woes but then I suppose never I read into it a little bit and realized how important having a menstrual cycle is then maybe I started to go into maybe I should work on this potentially um but yeah it's not easy and sometimes people will be like okay this actually happened because I entered pre-season and I didn't change my food and they're like okay it's black and white it's like this happens so I do this to fix it and they'll do everything they need to they maybe keep increasing their food or reducing their exercise until it comes back but for I'd say 99% of people that I would see with it it's very much, uh, okay, this is the ideal, this is where you're at, and how can we bridge that gap a little bit and just kind of continually work on tweaking the food habits that have become the norm that maybe shouldn't be the norm for someone. And there's two things I want to ask you leading on from that. Um, First one is, like, when you're on, let's say, one of the um, contraceptives, maybe you're on, like, the coil and you don't have a period Uh like I mean while we know it's all you know great for the first Uh while not to have it it can be really Uh you know annoying at times let's just put it out there it can be really annoying at times but Mm -hmm. people who maybe don't have it for reasons like being yeah on um the coil or something like that Mm -hmm. where some people you know their period stops Mm -hmm. how would you tell the signs in that case. um so like contraceptives will mask it because they're working I suppose on your hormones so like the whole point of the pill is that you don't ovulate um so yes you might get a bleed every month but it's not a period it's a bleed and again that's something that's not widely known you're never taught that in school if you start the pill well I don't know I wasn't told it whenever I started it no um so like that's not really went into it so if you think you're stopping you're you're having your pill break every month and then you get a bleed you think happy days everything's going well um and then sometimes people come off the pill that's whenever they realize like oh wait this year isn't back yet maybe the doctor will tell them to wait six months see if it does come back and if it's still not back then they might think okay actually maybe maybe the pill was masking this going on for ages like if they think back to how they're exercising now and food wise how long have they been doing that for because potentially these issues could have been manifesting in the background long before they stopped the pill and then realized they're not having a period. So in terms of hormonal impacts of contraceptives, the copper coil might have the least, but it's kind of the best of a bad bunch. I'm not saying don't go on any contraceptives, like they obviously serve a very important role, but it's just something to be aware of. If you're in a contraceptive and you hear all this stuff about overtraining, underfuel and stress, then take a look and see like, are you doing more like are you doing the training and you're doing more are you doing double sessions when you maybe you don't need to be doing double sessions and things like that are you having any more injuries or picking up more colds and things feeling cold all the time is another really big sign that you're under fueling so um like the term like a cold white feet or like always having like cold hands cold feet need, always need to like have like a big fleece on in the house and things like that or even like mood changes so like hungry is a mild term to use it but you know those types of things when actually like you get agitated about eating out or you know not having control over your food 
constipation, bloating, diarrhea. There's loads of different signs, but I suppose that would be where it's useful to go and see a health professional to kind of get their insight and see if something might be happening in the background. And if you lose your period and you're not on the pill, then the pill will not bring your period back. So you don't want to be doing that where possible. Um, it doesn't protect your bones anymore. It just makes everyone feel a little bit better because you're having to bleed every month. But eventually you might want to come off the pill again and you're going to be faced with the exact same issue. I definitely heard that before. That whole, you know, if you don't have it, the pill will help you bring yeah. it back. And it's just amazing all these things you hear. And it just shows how important it is to fact check everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes the people PCOS, they might get started on the pill for symptom management. But if you're missing your period and that's PCOS misdiagnosed and you actually have HA, then again, starting the pill is just masking an issue that's going to come up later on. Obviously, there are other reasons why, but like, it's just so important to understand your body. So like, even if you are taking it regularly, they do advise that you take a break every couple of months. Like, obviously you know, you still have to be safe. And obviously, you know, the main cause of taking the pill is to prevent pregnancy because yeah. God knows the stress that might cause someone yeah. if it was an unplanned pregnancy. Yeah. But it is still, it is still advised to come off mm-hmm. it every so often because if you do have that underlying condition, you're not going to notice. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's maybe something that people need to be a little bit more aware of because people can be on the pill for years and years and years and not not realize that there's an issue until maybe they come off it because they want to get pregnant and then they realize oh my gosh like this is something I need to be sorting and it you know it's not an overnight success usually for the majority of people it can take you know it can take a month it can take a couple of months it can take even years you know depending on I suppose how long perhaps you've had HA without realizing and then also how easy or how um flexible you are in terms of making changes to your diet and exercise schedule and then um like I was speaking to Martina from Fit a few weeks ago she came on this podcast and she was talking about tracking periods and is Mm -hmm. that something that you would encourage your clients to do yeah definitely so I always think if we were told in school like apart from like this is a tampon this is a sanitary pad if they said okay right if you started your period track any mood changes track if you're maybe hungry at certain times of the month if you're any more constipated if you have discharge anything like that sore boobs any pms type symptoms you would learn so much about yourself so there are loads of tracking apps and they're really good they kind of can predict when your period should come so you know if you're having a really intense like training month or you join this boot camp or something and actually your period's meant to come the 14th and it comes on the 21st then you know that actually your body's experiencing more stress this month I'd even get people to track any PMS or ovulation signs and symptoms whenever they're they don't have a period so sometimes ovulation will precede getting an actual bleed so like that egg white discharge any PMS type symptoms can be happening in the background and on a monthly basis and it's kind of like I always think of like me starting our old old lawnmower where you literally need to like detach your shoulder from its <laughs> from its attachment because it's so yeah. old like, so it's revving it's revving and then it finally gets going so that's kind of like your menstrual cycle so those type things can be really encouraging signs and really motivating as well to be like oh my gosh my period's still not back but actually this month I got some discharge and I've never had that before so if they track that and then it was actually I got it at the same time next month then things are starting to happen in the background um, and also sometimes people can get their period back and then then they go to track it and they notice actually they're not getting the quite discharge or they notice that between the quite discharge and the bleed that it's a really short luteal phase so like that second phase or the second like two weeks roughly um it might only be like seven or ten days and that again is a sign that you're not fully fully recovered like maybe you need to work uh, still on reducing stress it's not like period back happy days let's go but you're definitely right about like not having sufficient education in this like I'm sure mm-hmm. like I know I'm listening here going wow actually I didn't mm-hmm. know some of that yeah but 
if we drill it in at a young age, if you just mm -hmm. from when you first get your period start tracking it, um, yeah. you wouldn't even realize but you're building good habits for life because when you're an mm -hmm. athlete, maybe in your late teens, early twenties, mm -hmm. like a female athlete, you're probably not thinking about starting a family. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I know back when I was like in my late teens, early twenties, if mm -hmm. you had said that to me about, Oh yeah, but you need to think about in the future, having kids and yeah. stuff. I probably would have laughed at you. Yeah. But when, as you said, loss of period, that is 100% linked to your fertility at later life. So while yes. you might think about it now, it can cause serious heartache for couples further yes. down the line. So if and it's not um, like it's not the only thing. So like estrogen will be low if you've lost your period, but estrogen protects your bones. So, you know, that could be something maybe like if someone's like, well, we never want to have children, so it doesn't affect me. Like estrogen protects your bones. So actually breaking your bones, getting lost to do process at the age of 20, those type of things are really important and big things that you maybe need to think about. As well, estrogen can protect your cardiac and heart health as well. So sometimes we see people, they're really fit. They're definitely under eating, but their cholesterol's high. And then maybe they get told to cut down on fats and things like that when that's compete the complete opposite they need to do so um so yeah like those things can all be linked to low estrogen as well so fertility is one side of it but just like overall health um is another thing to consider as well and it can it will impact your for performance eventually too so yeah there's a lot of things as well as fertility to just bear in mind too yeah because you're absolutely dead right not everyone is interested in having kids not everyone wants to go on and start a family and um, so it's just knowing the things like as you said the estrogen levels and things like that mm -hmm. because again we did talk a few weeks ago on this podcast about the cycle and the different phases and um, mm -hmm. so what kind of foods like we talked about changing your training cycle to fit in with the menstrual cycle. So depending mm. on what time of the month we're on, maybe you'd prioritize strength training versus endurance and so on. And I'm sure that your dietary requirements need to change to keep up with that. Yeah. So, so whenever you approach your period, then your body, actually your body temperature will increase and you'll need more calories basically so that's when people are like oh my gosh my beard's coming i'm going to dive into chocolate but actually you're probably diving into chocolate because you're eating the same as what you normally do but your body needs more at that time as well so making accommodations for that like trying to get in a little bit more protein and your carbs and your fat can help to kind of alleviate that hunger as well and um, so it's bearing in mind that as well then if you get really bad pms then eating anti-inflammatory foods so like oily fish like your salmon and those types of things um nuts seeds green leafy veg all those types of things can help um to reduce pms too as well you can get some um some supplements and things but the most widely researched um vitamins and minerals for reducing pcos are vitamin d and calcium so making sure if you follow a plant-based diet or don't take dairy that you're definitely getting calcium in fortified sources like your plant drinks or yogurts um vegan cheeses and things like that as well so again when you monitor and see kind of do you have any signs and symptoms when are you feeling hungry okay maybe that's actually that hunger is a sign that you need to be eating a little bit more at that stage as well and um, so everyone's different in what like I never really got really bad PMS my little sister gets really bad PMS so like everyone is different in what they experience so monitoring where you're at if you feel like more tired during training at certain phases of your menstrual cycle then again like make sure you're eating enough carbs before your training make sure you're refueling after as well and um, so yeah more just taking note of what you're experiencing and saying okay right I'm feeling tired am I getting enough sleep am I stressed am I eating enough um to recover from training too and we're absolutely not saying that you can't dive into the chocolate when you are mm -hmm. yeah. we are definitely not yeah. saying that but it is just knowing that and yeah. again learning something new every day you know yeah. that whole having to maybe just increase your portion size yeah exactly because by no means is a handful of nuts the same as a chocolate bar and like I love chocolate so I would never suggest that but um <laughs> it's just being aware that you're maybe going to need to eat 
a good bit of chocolate to feel full whereas if you had like say like I don't know um a yogurt and fruit and then you had your chocolate bar that you were going to have then you've got a little bit more nutrition in and then you're also actually satisfying whatever you're feeling like eating magnesium can also help because um, if you get PMS and it's kind of like a crumpy type feeling, then magnesium works on muscle contractions. So things like pumpkin seeds, um, nuts and seeds and those types of things can help. Or sometimes people would take a supplement, but sometimes magnesium supplements can cause you to run to the loo. So if you do start taking them and realize that you're getting a little bit more diarrhea, then maybe you just focus on the food sources. Um, and a lot of these, like any of the multivitamins that you can get in the shops, they can be sourced naturally, but it's just about eating mm-hmm the right foods yeah. so if you just even googled a list of magnesium rich foods mm-hmm. you find yeah. natural ones so you don't yeah. have to like i don't know some people are against taking supplements as well and that is perfectly fine you just need to make sure yeah. that you eat the correct foods that target whatever it is you might be lacking in yeah definitely and the only supplement that everyone really needs at the minute is vitamin d um especially during the winter months because we usually get it from the sun and obviously there's no sun at the minute and even if there was you wouldn't get enough vitamin d made from that sunlight because the rays aren't strong enough so every adult in ireland should be taking vitamin d between the months of september and april to help absorb calcium and then helps with your bone health and that's even more important if you have lost your period because you're not getting that bone protection from your estrogen um production as well and like if you were working a standard job, it's dark when you go in, it's dark when you yeah. leave for home. Yeah, exactly. You're really not getting any exposure to the sun, mm-hmm. which you know is unfortunate, but such <laughs> is life. We have to we have nice green grass because of all the rain, I suppose. And just a question I had now, and I absolutely don't know if you have an answer for this, but it's just curious. Mm-hmm. I never really tracked my calories, but recently, mm-hmm. like last few months. I just kind of felt like I wasn't eating enough. You know, you like yeah. all the symptoms you described, you know, if you're feeling uh-huh. fatigued, um, mm-hmm. thankfully never had any negative experience with a period in terms of losing uh-huh. it. But, yeah. you know, you can tell in other ways if it's maybe a bit off or if you're a bit mm-hmm. tired. And I did start tracking. Um, and I was just wondering if any of the calorie trackers, and again, you might not know the, the answer to this. Do any yeah. of them account for the fact that women, when they're um, starting PMSing, when their body temperature is increasing, they have to eat more calories? Have you ever? No, I'm not too sure calories? if they do. To be honest, I've I've not come across one myself, so I couldn't say for sure. But I know like the main ones that would be quite popular definitely don't. There is an app called Fitter Women, F-I-T-R. I think it's maybe Irish, maybe based in the UK. I'm not too sure. But um, they, you can, that's a period tracker, but they also give like nutrition tips for different times of the month and things. So that can be really handy if you want kind of a more specific training period tracker and more information with regards to your cycle and what type of training and what type of foods would be good to have at that stage. But they don't give calories on that. Um, but it is a good source of information just for general info. Um, and have a look at it and it's easy read like it's not like a big massive research paper that you need to read for every phase and um, like it's just a sentence or two fantastic I will definitely check that one out yeah that was just a random thought that came to my mind because yeah maybe it's a gap know, in the market eh? <laughs> yeah exactly someone listening might think oh that's a great idea and might jump on board if you do come yeah. back to us let us <laughs> give us a cut <laughs> exactly because it can be worrying when you think that you're not getting enough calories as it is and then realizing, mm-hmm. oh, there's times of the month I need even more. Yeah. So it is just, as yeah. you said, about being balanced. But I think instead of just tracking calories, if you're just getting nutritional advice and this is, you know, eat more protein at this time of the yeah. month or mm-hmm. maybe focus more on your carbs at this time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Excellent. And so again, we talked about sort of coming up to PMSing, what you should eat, but then what would you recommend the rest of the month? Like when should you eat the most protein? When should you focus on carbs, things like that? Could you just give us a short rundown of, let's say a typical cycle, maybe first week, second week, and then the last two weeks. And so from first week, sorry, starting with when you're on your period. So with that, I never really give specific 
foods four times a month unless people have PMS and those types of things because sometimes people can eat the same throughout the month and they feel grand you always want your protein I suppose to be quite high depending on what type of training you're doing and to keep your fiber high as well so those are the key most important things and then at the time of the month when maybe it's coming up to PMS you might need a little bit more fats because they're more on the inflammatory so like your nuts your seeds your fish and those types of things but in terms of doing like a week to week one I suppose you don't want to overcomplicate it because this happens every month you want to think okay this is my week one foods that I need to be in now so it won't make a massive difference I keep the protein and fiber high and then it's just about tweaking the fats maybe in the run up to um to your period or if you're getting any pms type symptoms sometimes people get pms symptoms around ovulation as well so there might be a little bit more inflammation around then too but i wouldn't over complicate it too much um do you know if you are feeling hungry at certain times a month make sure you're eating enough protein and maybe actually you need a little bit more carbs in there um because maybe the training's having a bigger impact on that time of month but I think it goes back to if you're eating a balanced diet, it you know, as you said, don't overcomplicate it because then mm-hmm. if you're trying to like track everything down to the last minute, yeah. you can burn out like pretty quickly yeah. doing that. You can be frustrated. Then the next month you're like, oh, that month was so stressful. Like yeah. I was feeling really crap. I'm sick of mm-hmm. doing that. And then you might be more inclined to binge eat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, it's like eating for injury, like even just changing what you're eating based on that is a really big change. So you don't want to be doing that every single week. Um, So, yeah, there's not too many big changes like and you're, you know, you go go by what you're feeling. Like, are you more tired? You probably need a little bit more carbs to make sure that you're prioritizing sleep. Are you feeling like you're not recovering as well? Like make sure that you're definitely getting enough carbs, enough protein. Are you feeling like you have PMS type symptoms? Maybe you need to add in a little bit more of the fats as well into your diet. But definitely balanced diet and knowing your body. And like that comes back to just if you understand your period and you understand mm-hmm. how you react to training at different times of your cycle, well, yeah. then it's just the same. If you just understand what kind of foods work well for you, what maybe yeah. maximizes your energy. Uh-huh. you can really get the most benefit from understanding yourself versus doing exactly what someone told you to a near excessive point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I suppose when we talk about female specific nutrition, you know, it has to link into periods because other general nutrition is the same, regardless of whether you're male, female, mm-hmm. your age and um, general nutrition is just important across the board. But females, I suppose, again, going back to that whole, the advantage of having a period is that yeah. we can tell so much about our health from it. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely. And like, I suppose it's all like a sound like a broken record, but like it does tell you a lot, like if your period is or if your cycles lengthen night, you're more stressed. So you need to try and figure out where that stress is coming from and act on that stress to help reduce it. So I think then just to kind of try and summarize that up, stress, food and exercise. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, so they're the three causes of hypothalamic amenorrhea and they're the three things that need to be managed in order to get your period back so quite often people might try a lot of other different things might ask like oh there's certain foods that will increase estrogen things like that but really the answer to your issues is obvious it's not easy but it's usually obvious and that's the thing you like you want to go for the low-hanging fruit I suppose so like if you know you're restricting what you're eating you know you avoid certain foods you maybe are quite cautious of eating out or eating outside the home where you don't have full control of food you know that that's an issue it's not that you don't have chia seeds in your diet or something like that so I would just work with like a registered health professional so they can help to guide you and they can maybe see gaps that you don't see so someone could be in more than enough calories but they've got a really low fat diet and they might have lost their periods. So it might just be more to do with like the macro kind of content. Someone could be in lower calories, but eating a really balanced diet. And it's more to do with the overall energy as well. So, um, and then someone could just be smashing the gym every morning in an empty stomach. And maybe that's the issue for them. Um, so yeah, seeing someone who um, is qualified to work in that area or is a 
a health professional with an interest in that area is really important because they might see something that you don't see and then and then you know kind of what to work on but you definitely cannot forget about one area when you are looking after your health you do have to consider all the factors just because you're an athlete doesn't mean that that's the problem just because you're a real foodie doesn't mean that's the problem you really have to look at the whole picture yeah yeah exactly and consider all things I mean usually there is a clear like okay they're definitely restricted or they're definitely over exercising and more but usually it's a bit of a combination of both but then at the end of the day and you have said this if you do lose your period you can get it back so like if you lose it and maybe you're thinking oh this is great don't have to worry about it you know first of all not great from a health point of view Hmm. but secondly you don't have to give up it could take months it might take years but there's always that possibility that you might yeah yeah definitely and if it is hypothalamic gamenorrhea it's simple in terms of how you get it back but it's not easy to do if that makes sense so stress less eat more exercise less like those sound simple but doing that is not easy if you're someone who's used to exercising five or six times a week who's used to batch cooking meal prep and you know eating quite healthful foods for the general public and then to change and to change all that is not easy um but on paper it sounds I suppose it sounds maybe a little bit easier than maybe what it is once people start to try and um try and sort the issue absolutely and I'm sure people listening would think god if only I could stress less just by willing myself yeah. to stress yeah. less yeah or exactly because maybe stressing less is actually like not going to the gym in the morning time and leaving it to the till the weekend and even if that means you go less grand like you're still going to the gym maybe you can go walk or something like that that's less stressful or you can do that after work because you know if you're going to the gym in the morning time you're thinking okay it's like stop drop and roll out of bed like your alarm goes off earlier than maybe you need to get up you're in the gym then you come home maybe you have to shower get ready for work and then you're like okay need to run for the bus or maybe you're working from home and that's fine um but then you've already kind of you're already starting the day on a stressed foot um so yeah I suppose I'd be looking at all the components of stress and like sometimes we would say like recommend yoga recommend mindfulness those types of things that can help reduce stress because stress is stress and it's different for other people and what might stress me might not stress someone else but if you're stressed not doing anything about it isn't going to help the situation Exactly. And like stress can be that mental stress of maybe having something constantly playing on your mind, but then the physical stress of putting your body under so much pressure and not refueling properly. Like that is a form of stress yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the stress we've come used to talking about, but yeah. it's still a form of stress that's important yeah, to recognize. I have absolutely learned a load there and you've, I, uh, you've, kind of answered some of my misconceptions and changed my view of some things, which mm-hmm. is always very positive. So hopefully some other people get the same. Um, but is there anything else that you think is important for like, not just women, but men, women, athletes, just your everyday person about nutrition? Oh gosh, that's a very, very, very kind of broad question. But if there was one um, thing you could say, what would it be that um eating for aesthetics is not the same as eating for 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 performance so if i see maybe athletes in work and they come and i'm like okay what's your goal and they're like oh i want to be this body fat and there's literally like there's no guide or range or reason for being that body fat like that's not performance nutrition that's aesthetics and maybe getting to those levels might compromised performance maybe so yeah more just being aware of why your what your goal is and why your goal is that way and will that goal compromise maybe something else that you should be prioritizing and people like especially nowadays you see a lot that exercises may be 30 percent what you eat is 70 percent of how mm. you look so people can really probably get a bit too hung up on what they eat but if you look yeah. at some of um some of the marathon runners especially the female ones who've come out recently and said look at me in this picture this is me doing yeah, incredible yeah. and look at my belly my belly is not looking flat mm-hmm. so- yeah yeah exactly and I think there was a runner 
someone Bartholomew, and I think she's Australian. She did a really good Instagram post last year, maybe in Eating Disorders Awareness Week. And it was a picture of her like com- having competed, like done really well in a race. And she was like, at this stage, everyone thought I was doing great. And it was at this stage that I was at my worst. Like I was under and I wasn't like recovering well. You know, I was getting absolutely exhausted from the training and things like that. And so what you see isn't always a full picture, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Cara, I'm probably going to say her surname incorrect, Cara Goucher, Goucher, um, an American, she also did a post very recently about that. She's an American long distance runner. And I think when she came, could have been third in the New York Marathon, uh-huh. she did not look extremely lean. And she said, this is my body. Yeah. This was my body in its peak fitness. So you really yeah. don't have to be the, I suppose, the aesthetic definition of yeah. lean in order to be in your yeah. peak performance. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. And I think people are maybe common to realize that as well. Um, but yeah, slowly. And maybe the pressures that maybe were there previously, people have kind of cottoned on to maybe that's not actually helpful or accurate like in terms of sports where maybe you have to wear more skimpy clothing like and those types of things where maybe disordered eating things might be a bit more common like ballet and like ruin those types of things as well so um yeah I think it's just awareness more than anything else and like if you have lost your period and you're training to like a high level like if you can speak to someone like a coach or someone on the team and let them know, because like you're not going to be used to anyone if you break your ankle and, you know, you have to be out from the team or sit out from the team and things like that. So, um, yeah, you're, you're a human first and your health comes first and you'll, you'll not always be an athlete, but you'll always need to kind of think about your health if that makes sense. So what you do as an athlete could impact your health once you stop competing to a high level or competing to the level that you compete to at the minute exactly we won't always be able to compete at high levels Mm -hmm. but your health is your wealth essentially if you don't have your health you know unfortunately some people don't have the best health and I'm sure they would trade anything they wouldn't care what they look like so Mm. thank you so much for that wonderful advice and thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your wealth of knowledge because it has been fantastic and just like you said if we make awareness about it if people understand it Mm. it's going to help us all out in the long run yeah definitely um and thank you for having me on it was great um so yeah hope people um learn something from it but i yeah i could talk about periods all day love it and if you are interested in listening to Catherine talk about just general nutrition do look back you were on a guest you you were on a guest you were a guest on the podcast earlier this year and again wonderful advice there and absolutely recommend a listen so thank you so much for giving up your time and sharing all that knowledge with us and we will most likely be talking to you again (laughs) cheers thank you